so this is a, a basic introduction to the urban design uh, you know uh, 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 theories I mean ideas you know and what are the various aspects uh, that is influence the practice uh, largely uh, you know when when you uh, uh, your architectural questions become larger it tend to become you know urban in nature and when you engage the urban question you uh, you need certain uh, uh theoretical uh, backing uh, you need a little bit of exposure to urban design practice and this course is exactly is trying to do that it is expected that you will uh, familiarize with all the basic theories it is also expected that you will be able to uh, mobilize some of these theories and ideas in your studios and perhaps uh, at the thesis level so this is the basic aim of this course uh, i'm not we are not going to get into much deeper urban design theories uh, you know we're going to purely look at uh, uh, operate at you know uh, uh, what i call it you know uh, 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 urban scape theories uh, which is largely dealing with the whole idea of you know uh, the sense of kind of a delight when you look at the urban form for example uh, you see a skyline you know it, it 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 gives you a sense of delight so there are these theories which are you know uh, 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 perceptual theories uh, cognitive theories there are uh, uh, space and time theory which deals with morphology space and text and human behavior so broadly this, this will constitute the basic structure of uh, of this course we are imagining that you will have uh, six lectures that is a six different types of theories uh, six different types or ways of reading cities this is a broad understanding that this will enable the way you read cities and then this uh, 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 will go systematically week by week uh, in this process we will also introduce uh, you with the small assignments uh, assignments which really uh, 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 do not read uh, do not need any heavy reading but it requires you know uh, uh, you to draw something uh, you know uh, maybe you know where you are staying maybe uh, you know you can uh, uh, you know place this that you have traveled and thing like that so we will engage with the such assignments and there would be a larger assignments which is actually making a map of the city or area or a precinct you know likewise so we will deal with some of this historical theories uh, you know uh, which are dated back uh, uh, you know medieval times uh, you know uh, uh, i'm talking about pre renaissance theories uh, 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 and these theories have uh, influenced the way this uh, medieval cities were organized and some of the uh, theories which are uh, which were you know uh, uh, looking at uh, you know larger discipline in terms of more the uh, cities are more than just design they are also you know related to sociology uh, cultural practices and thing like that and how they are uh, you know embedded into a space syntax theory behavioral theory because very often cities are designed for particular reason but human you know humans tend to behave differently they tend to adapt cities differently so these are all you know uh, uh, varieties of ways of uh, engaging a conversation with the city it's a way in which you uh, read cities and this reading of cities are the basic fundamentals uh, of urban design theory uh, to enable your process of re responses now when you see certain kind of city structure you tend to decode that city with help of maps you are able to differentiate variety of cities with map with a single map you can able to make judgment on what cities are you know what are the constituent parts what are the morphological structure what kind of grains texture the city has and what kind of activity the city would have by just by looking at map so this will enable that process subsequently uh, what i will do is uh, uh, i will i will uh, i will start with the uh, ppt uh, uh, this is a basic ppt that uh, uh, about you know various aspects of cities uh, uh.
Uh, Manoj, the presentation is not visible yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a moment. Okay. Now. Yeah, it's something's coming up. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. Yeah, it's visible now. Urban design. Sorry, the spelling error. Urban design historiography. So we are going to look at some of this, uh, uh, you know, historical processes. Uh, some of these important events uh, and how that has really, you know, shaped the way we have, you know, been seeing uh, 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 various cities and why is, you know, every city is different from other cities. So uh, we will we'll try to kind of map uh, the historiography. So urban design is a, you know, it's not just a static phenomenon. It's not a, it's not like architecture where you draw a map, draw plans, section, elevation, and it is constructed the way you imagine. Cities are are, are long drawn processes. Uh, they evolve. Uh, you plan something, but they evolve with something. So there is a constant, you know, negotiation between what is planned and what what comes about. And this process is is a long drawn process. And uh, uh, it kind of a brings a very important um, uh, important aspects of you know time and culture because in this negotiation various things they complement each other many things they cancel each other out you know or or, or few aspects they, they they get negotiated and and you know kind of appropriated and what we call it time and culture of cities is a product of such process. And in the process, uh, cities also, you know, adapt what you call it metaphors. Every city has a metaphor. I mean, uh, uh, like you're from De Mumbai or you're from Delhi, you're from Chennai, you know, even though you speak the same language, uh, you can make out the difference because the, the cultural uh, grains are, you know, uh, are embedded into you, your personality and, you know, this generate uh, vari the, uh, uh, varieties uh, of metaphors. And uh, these metaphors uh, are the one, you know, uh, uh, we establish our cultural values. Like Mumbai has a metaphor, you know, uh, it's a commercial capital or, 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 you know, or a place for, you know, uh, where the rich, rich stays, poor stays together. Or, or you begin to draw various other metaphors over a period of time, and you know, this kind of a uh, uh, sets a kind of a way we live in the city. So, what is urban design deals with? You know, uh, broadly, it is the interrelationship of building to buildings. It means you tend to look at one or group of building and its relationship with the other buildings, how they complement each other how they make a cohesive statement or how they really, you know, set such same tone or a different tone. So it is a programming uh, uh, of designing buildings in an urban setting. What you call it a largely a public realm. It means your buildings are not just a functional architecture, but buildings are part of the urban realm. It contributes something to the city. So a lot of inner city, historic city, you will find uh, there is a sense of urban setting and building respond to the street, building respond to the building next to it. And there is a certain sense of cohesiveness. Then, of course, the buildings have to relate to people. How do buildings relate to people? There are various ways. We always talk about scale of the buildings. That's the first thing we talk about. And that's the first way you begin to relate buildings with people. Second uh, way, perhaps you could talk about how buildings are perforated. It means how your building is accessible by people. You can also program your buildings. Your public realm is not just the building edge, but public realm almost enters your building. So if you look at a lot of historic buildings, um, they do have that quality. You can go inside the building, come out. It's like a part of a public realm, which is, which is, which is conditioned with uh, walls and floors but they are part of urban space in some sense. So there are varieties of ways you uh, make buildings respond to people. And obviously the buildings, uh, people, they are related to economy. Uh, how kind of a commercial vitality, vibrancy is created through this urban setting. Uh, it's a very important phenomena of any city, you know, uh, to thrive on. Cities also about mobility. 
I mean, various ways you are connected to various things. Uh, visual connection is the first thing. You know, walkability is another thing. Uh, then other modes of transportation systems, connectedness. You know, all kind of things that comes under mobility. It's not just a fast mobility mass rapid transit system, but it's even a walkability. So this kind of mobility also adds the way in which the cities, uh, you know, builds a character. I mean, a lot of cities we we talk about in European context are walkable cities. It means you don't need to depend on transport. You don't need to own a car. You can move around city freely, and almost all kind of functions that you need to perform for day-to-day -day living, you can do it by you know just walking down. So that's kind of a mobility structure that are very important, and and. Buildings, the way you set your buildings, the way you program your buildings, the way buildings respond to a public realm, urban realm, has to deal with mobility all the time. Obviously, the very important part of the city's uh, the urban form is ecology. How how urban form respond to the natural resources? For example, Mumbai and mangroves, they are like integrated. How they respond and uh, 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 I mean, it took us long time to realize that the ecology of the city is so important. Mangroves are so important, and now there is a there is a culture of looking at mangroves from a different perspective, uh, and it's a very important component. If you look at the Navi Mumbai, almost 70% of the you know uh, spaces are reserved for eco ecology, and only 30% are available for building. So you can understand now how cities are slowly gearing up to understand the ecological system. And how urban form comes about by acknowledging its ecology. Buildings also respond to the history. It talks about history. It responds to history. It carries forward history. It stitches the history. You know, so the history is not just about buildings, but it's also about uh, narratives and meta narratives. It's about the oral history. It's about uh, visual history. So there are various kinds of histories which are part of the, the way we live. The, you can even talk about the history of foods in the, in the city. And that's also part of history. And a lot of cities do recognize through the food culture. Cities also about, you know, the urban form is also about the belief. Uh, there is certain sense of belief and that belief makes you live in that city. I think most of us live in the city with that belief that 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 Mumbai is, is in some sense a gateway to the world. You know, it's a belief. We believe that uh, Mumbai is always part of their global culture. And, and we, we, we believe in that, that, that imagination and we live with that idea. We live and we build our cultural systems through this belief. And there are various other beliefs. I'm not saying there's a one way of looking at it. There are many other beliefs. There are cultural belief, ritual belief, so on and so forth. Then, of course, the city also has an image and identity, you build that image and identity through uh, through the process, historical process. Uh, it comes about, these images are, you know, also very dynamic in nature. They change over a period of time. City identity changes over a period of time. And they mark the, the, the culture of the city. And it also uh, about how, you know, a fast city and people adapt to new things, new changes. For example, uh, Mumbai was industrial city, and now Mumbai is going through a deindustrialization process. It has captured new imagination, it has captured new identity, and it has captured new aspiration. Because aspirations are are something that we, we live with, and we engage with the city. And this image, identity, and aspirations are are a very important part of any city. City is also about freedom. I think it's very important. I mean. More the constraint, the, the 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 more unpopular city becomes. Cities, I mean, Mumbai is in some sense we call it a safe city. You can move around freely. You can come back late in the night. There is a nightlife, uh, and and variety of things attached to the word freedom. Uh, freedom is not something that you you can do anything. But then there are uh, certain behavioral issues, uh, behavioral aspects that is that is ingrained in us when we adapt to. Uh, you know, some cities. For example, in Mumbai, you you rarely find kind of a, you know someone who is stranger immediately. 
because you you it's a, it's, a, it's seen as a, it's a melting pot and you tend to acknowledge anyone with any language background but if you go to let's say delhi you could be easily identified as a stranger because of because of your dialect because of you know your behavior and thing like that so city uh, kind of has a sense of freedom ingrained into you and uh, that gives a sense of identity also and city is about the politics it's about contestations of various kinds the contestations are political in nature contestations are based in the land contestations are based in politics of identity politics of image and all kind of things are attached to uh, uh, the word uh, you know politics so uh, you see two types of cities uh, uh, one uh, which was uh, which is uh, madurai where you can understand the the social fabric through uh, through this built fabric structure buildings are almost woven like a fabric they are all integrated and you can understand the social structure prevailing social structure in, in such fabric and the the right side is the the hiranandani gardens uh, attempting to make uh, imagery you know uh, perceptual understanding what a city could be uh, but one can definitely uh, Uh, compared to the left side you can definitely understand the 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 social fabrics the the sense of identity you know and all kind of issues that we talk about you know uh, with respect to social and cultural dimension of cities and the right side image definitely falls short in those dimension so a uh, uh, lot of question comes to our mind what is city for what does city do what we do to the city why city is so important i mean is city for what you see in the image or city is something more than that what is that we are supposed to do when we design city when we understand city when we read cities i think a lot of question comes to my mind, my mind a lot of question comes to all of you so what is that city what is that urban condition that needs to be designed when you talk about urban design what is it component you will intervene so that's the first question comes to your mind when you start reading cities what is the urban condition that needs to be raised yes we often talk about uh, you know what we call it imperfect eraser you know which erases something leaves something and uh, what is the urban condition that we think we should be erasing it you know that's a question of uh, uh, what is the urban condition that need to be restored very important uh, ethical questions uh, uh, about the way the cities are you know evolved historically and uh, is there any condition that you think could be restored as compared to the previous step you know what is that you need to erase i think these are all ethical questions what is that urban condition that need to be reprogrammed yes we are going through this phase uh, most of the cities are going through this phase i mean european european cities have gone through this phase and uh, almost all historical buildings are reprogrammed it means they are made to reuse with the contemporary functions buildings are modernized internally they adapt new functions they adapt new services new infrastructure and new function and people tend to kind of uh, you know enjoy such situation when you work in a you know historic buildings but they have all the amenities and infrastructure which a contemporary building would have so we need to also look talk about what condition that we need to reprogram very very important function i think most of you will be dealing with this some or other way what is the urban condition needs to be revitalized a lot of uh, urban areas you see they go under decay they deteriorate you know they i mean like some mills you know or even for example eastern waterfront you know this this kind of urban areas which have evolved with certain you know trade and commerce and communication in mind at one point of time obviously this this kind of modes of production are not not uh, uh, you know static they are dynamic they change today we are sitting and you know having a online lecture the whole mode has changed but a lot of things will change over a period of time and it also makes many things under decay so i think we need to 
really apply our ethical and moral responsibility how do we revitalize what is that situation that needs to be revitalized and how do we do that so revitalization is a very important process very pertinent to indian context and definitely more pertinent to our second tier cities because all the second tier cities are historic cities for example banaras lucknow jaipur madurai so when you look at uh, you know uh, the city cities are very complex structure they are not just some of uh, accumulation of buildings but there are many many more forces they work on cities and this diagram is uh, uh, taken from situation in city and try to draw a, a similar map for mumbai and one can look at the components uh, uh, which are you know uh, one component which is expanding peripheries mumbai is expanding and we are building satellite towns we are building new you know uh, extended suburban areas and there is cities are are it's a kind of irreversible process one thing you must understand urban is a irreversible process you are adding more and more complex this complexity that you deal with the urban is irreducible so expanding peripheries we have urban agriculture you have satellite towns you know uh, you have post industrial landscape millions and many other industrial areas are transforming uh, you have a very important component ecology you have a, you have a fishing villages which are native inhabitants of the city you have a historic core which is again very important there is a everyday life that you see uh, in the city informality very important function of the city i think uh, uh, the in last several, couple of decades uh, you know all these global theories are talking about informality is a very important dimension of cities uh, cities are program but they cannot they cannot be program for informality informality is about is it's about various conditions is a social cultural practice economic practice and how they get ingrained into the city and the city is about global finance you know how the whole idea of global thing you know coming into your system gets networked that's very important and city is about utopia you always imagine you always live in that imaginary conditions imaginary situation that tomorrow is better than today and this utopian idea drives the city you know it it says that the higher the utopia the more dynamic city becomes because you have you always believe in working towards it so uh, very often this kind of you know mechanisms that are operating in, in cities uh, 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 you know cities complex cities uh, it is not easy to kind of uh, you know understand the cities you know? and very often you need to move away from the drawing board approach to a dialogue approach you know and that transition uh, you know is sometimes very important when we deal with cities like mumbai is so complex i mean for example if you compare mumbai and bhopal you know i mean it's the complexity is, is multifold and uh, i think uh, it requires alternate approach now dialogue could be a verbal conversation dialogue could be a simultaneous drawing or dialogue could be a trying to find a new social and cultural theories to understand the the urban fabric so that depends on situation but this is how uh, it's going to be so uh, just quickly you know some of these metaphors that we look at you know historically uh uh one of the prime driver of the modern city it says that you know the way uh, art form were evolved during you know uh, early uh, uh, you know 1900 uh, when uh, industrialization was rapidly penetrating into every part of the world and uh, the whole uh, idea of living working conditions were rapidly changing workers were living close to the working situation and a uh, uh, lot of everyday situation everyday life were transforming very fast because industrial production was the reality of that time of course no one expected that this industrial phase also has a life span and 
city will transform. So the lot of modern metaphors uh, are coming from this painting by Piet Mondrian. This is a painting when he flew over uh, Manhattan. He calls uh, he calls uh, this painting boogie woogie. Uh, the way things are stacked, uh, you know, uh, like a dominoes kind of uh, you know uh, kind of things, uh, you know, and then you uh, imagine you know uh, better living in this kind of gridded structure. There are small punctuations. There are large punctuations. There are lines which are cropped. There are lines which are cutting each other. So there is a strange thing that grid also does something to the way the cities are, and it 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 kind of forms its own interpretations, you know, over a period of time. So this became the very important modern metaphor uh, in a lot of cities that were designed after that. And one of the earlier attempt uh, 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 was to design the historic core of Paris with uh, with a with a high rise building with a 60 storied high and which would have fast uh, you know uh, uh, transit systems uh, uh, cutting through the fabric. You have a large open spaces and you know uh, you have a, a, a better it would imagine living conditions. Now, uh, uh, he talked about machine for living, and uh, this is literally translated into kind of a way buildings would be programmed, and you know, the buildings or houses would not be a retreat for you anymore. They would be a very spatial, transitory rela relationship that you will have with your house or a flat. And uh, you perform your task, and then you go to the another space, perform your task. So house is also fits into the entire mechanism of your life. And that mechanism is what he calls it machine for living. And perhaps at some point, this would define a new way of urbanity. So a lot of this grid and pattern emerged from that point of time. Uh, then, of course, there are other attempts to design cities uh, uh, in, you know, 70s. So what you see first example is much earlier example. This is much example and late example or last ex example where a city planner of Milton Keynes decided to design the city. Uh, this is a, a attempt where they wanted to stylize the grid, you know, with a more curvilinear kind of a you know experiential kind of a thing. They thought that grid is too boring and let's do something else and perhaps. Success or no success is not a question, but this was the last uh, nail in the coffin in terms of, you know, the planning discipline. A planner would design cities, you know, that was the last, this is the last attempt in metaphorical, it is, it says that this is the death of planning, because there is nothing much left to imagination if you think the cities are only about the roads and you, you, you stylize the road and that's the way you deal with urban. I think the very idea of urban design uh, discipline emerged uh, uh, early, uh, I mean, late 60s, uh, uh, you know, and then it became a very dominant profession. Uh, and uh, Milton Keynes was one of the one of the examples where urban design became more, you know, kind of uh, evolved in, in uh, uh, city design and, you know, city uh, design uh, decision making process. You must read uh, about this city, uh, Milton Keynes, uh, and there is another city in Australia, uh, capital Canberra. Please read uh, about that city also. Uh, they are a different kind of cities. Uh, they are planned and programmed in a particular way. So uh, uh, we talk about uh, Chandigarh all the time, but there was another city which was designed uh, designed uh, in same time frame by another architect and planner, Oscar Neiman. Uh, and Lucio uh, Costa, Lucio Costa was the planner, Oscar Niemeyer was the architect. Uh, and this was imagine the city is just going to be a diagram, a diagram where you can see one central axis, which cuts through. And there is a C shape kind of a, a mirrored C shape kind of a thing, which would be a residential district. And you can see a square formation, which is a kilometer by kilometer. 
is almost like a two kilometer stretch which runs through almost like 20 30 kilometer long and this was imagined to be a one you know uh, one uh, diagrammatic ideas but it was not imagined that this this kind of uh, uh, compartmental understanding of cities are not the, the way city function it was imagined this one kilometer by one kilometer uh, one area will be self sufficient it's walkable self sufficient and uh, it will have its own centrality to it but cities are not about those kind of things cities behave in a completely different way once it's get adapted and now uh, uh, slowly you know cities are changing the functions uh, buildings are transforming into a different kind of things and slowly the the whole diagrammatic understanding of city is slowly blurring you can see that you know there is a trace of that history uh, but you can see that uh, the earlier diagram clean diagram now slowly you know morphed with some other realities and of course uh, like the chandigarh it also has a capital complex this and baskar nima and it has that visual vocabulary it has a strong presence in the city and uh, it, it gives us a very interesting a strong identity to the city and of course we come to chandigarh chandigarh was also seen uh, with that kind of uh, metaphor of a human body the anatomy uh, of human body was seen as a kind of a way to guide the planning of cities and it was imagined that you know uh, cities for 20000 people uh, and it will have sectors it will have you know commercial sector educational sector residential sector and buildings i mean the, the whole entire cities were divided based on the sectors so, the, so this city was was imagined to work with this sectorial understanding and and of course it has a very interesting architecturally kind of a, uh, uh, you know uh, the capital complex designed by pop so uh, these are the two different experiments uh, of you know uh, uh, imagine the new modern life you know with 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 as as pitched against the you know medieval towns you know and this would give a new a new vision new imagination new living you know conditions and thing like that these are all utopian ideas of course now you see chandigarh chandigarh has expanded much beyond there are, you can't imagine city was designed for 20000 people and everyone would own a car at that point of time i mean car ownership is perhaps little uh, uh, common these days but it took so many years you know for city to respond to the original ideas but of course also it's transforming the bazaars are forming uh, you know in various se residential sector building typologies are changing uh, from singular use to multi use and thing like that so you can see that you know although city is green um, uh, it has a lot of freshness to it uh, and just to add a little bit to it that see, this is the only city in the world which is designed and executed the way the drawings were made even as of now every single com commercial buildings or a new residential district are constructed based on the design template so it's a world heritage city in that sense so a lot of people call it a you know modern hosmanization uh, hosmanization was you know uh, 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 during the time of uh, napoleon you know uh, uh, 1800 when he invited hotman to design boulevards boulevards in the paris by bulldozing the the, the medieval town and create a wide wide really wide boulevard which creates a sense of access so access was used uh, to mark the, the the identity of of paris but access also means power it means uh, the way visual two things are connected but you also talked about the the political order in that sense so a uh, uh, lot of current debate about our you know our the access in delhi and the reprogramming of that access is 
raising a lot of political issues you know so you can understand how this axes are very important so every time someone does something wholesale you know uh, uh, you know uh, removal of things or redoing things or doing new things we call it horsemanization so this is a modern horsemanization oops sorry so uh, uh, we when we talk about urban design we also bring in this idea of conservation all the time because you will have to deal with that you will have to kind of uh, you know deal with history and how do we acknowledge that in the process of taking cities forward and a uh, lot of this uh, new attempts uh, you know uh, in understanding indian urbanism you can see various examples one of the earlier examples uh, not fully built uh, is aranya by vivi doshi and uh, he's talking about how this whole idea of formality and informality are ingrained ingrained into our historic cities like jaipur madurai you know uh, 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 and these cities are kind of a planned in some sense but they have a sense of informality in it so one can see that informality you know when you look at you know this one of the sectors you know uh, this would be a commercial kind of a, you know commercial uh, a street uh, you know or a, a large public realm but as you come inside the neighborhood level it has sense of informality the space is gets far more informal uh, socially pervious kind of a fabric structure which is a very important part of our 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 cities and our social life so this was the earlier attempt to kind of understand cities a lot of cities have responded to you know their natural settings you know camouflage with the belief structure and varanasi is one of them how city releases itself to the water this is a temple town and you know it itself is a kind of a micro microorganism various functions are kind of a packed into a kind of a you know enclosed systems and uh, there are clear marking of gateways axes you know the movement systems everything is almost like a uh, like a small uh, city structure and once the city grows out of this temple towns you know uh, temples complexes they also tend to behave similarly uh, they tend to reinforce those axes uh, they tend to define those quadrants they tend to appropriate those quadrants uh, with different kind of communities coming together uh, doing their rituals uh, performing their economic activities so uh, one of the classic example is madurai where you see quadrants are are defined by the various communities so there is a gold market flower market you know the cloth market and thing like that and it gets organized within that system and in that process the streets which divide this economic activity become so vibrant they are full of life so these are some of these important lesson that we learned from historic cities uh this is a, a earlier attempt by nolier uh, you know uh, to understand city structure through a different kind of drawing this is the first attempt to draw uh, cities you know uh, and understand city structure so this is this is known as nolier's plan it means you draw uh, the buildings uh, which are uh, which are not public buildings so you make them dark and you draw the roads which are public you draw them white but at the same time you draw the plazas piazzas and public buildings which are accessible so you can actually make out the public realm you know at various scale so for example you know this is a pantheon you know pantheon is public building you can go inside come out and there are other buildings which has got you know plazas piazzas and the churches and thing like that so the plan reveals a different kind of order the activity order the public realm order and this becomes a very important exercise uh, you know the, the first stage of understanding how 
what are the various kind of public realm city has so it is known as nolius plan you also tend to kind of a look at city differently moment you to uh, you draw the important public buildings and the city reveals its structure differently because public buildings they come together with a large footprints and then there are smaller footprints around it one can imagine there is certain kind of power structure embedded into uh, this kind of buildings or there is a institutional system embedded into this large footprints and one can very well predict the way cities are you know evolved through this kind of fabric we'll read a will will do a separate lecture on this morphological structure we call it grains and texture there is a separate lecture for that and uh, uh, you will understand this in a in little bit in depth so very often cities are not just a singular structure drawn cities are all are are palimpsest palimpsest means palimpsest in literal sense is imperfect eraser it means you perform certain certain task on your cities you erase something but you leave something back and it, it it's 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 in the imperfect eraser leaves little bit of history little bit of you know past and you carry it forward city kind of a grows uh, you know and 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 develops various other structure and sub structures through this process so this is a earlier uh, attempt by uh, peter eisenman you know trying to draw uh, uh, you know design a project uh, in venice uh, with existing fabric around and then this is the place where corbusier was to design hospital with a grid iron structure so he, he uses this grid iron structure as a way you know the imperfect eraser would perform leave some grids erase some grids and build on it so this kind of you know uh, 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 history also is very important some events are you know there and this event is no more so you use those events as a starting point of your project for intervention this is uh, uh, again park de la ville project uh, by eisenman and bernard chumi they are looking at this idea of park and the public activity uh, slightly different from the way architecture would, would perform and this is a classic example how urban designer or urbanist would think about a project so this here the pro project was about designing various objects a non functional object or he would call it follies and allow this building to get readapted over a period of time so the non functional useless objects becomes part of a fabric over a period of time is almost like the way city works you know you perform and you perform some task but building uh, you know people respond to building completely different very often and they get appropriated so this is one uh, classic uh, exercise uh, of you know intervening into the park and this very famous project and cities also kind of a does you know uh, the, the ecosystem and thing like that this is new orleans uh, when hurricane struck the city uh city was below water level and then the entire city got submerged uh, and uh, what what you imagine when you design cities and what ecology does to a city are often you know conflicting in nature and uh, city has to deal with this kind of vulnerabilities uh we are going through a you know vulnerable stage right now through a different process and this vulnerabilities needs to be predicted uh and uh, one has to start thinking about cities from this perspective so there was this small uh, competition you know of, of designing this new orleans you know uh, to a school kids you know and the school children began to draw those hillocks you know you live in a hill with kind of a burrow kind of a thing you know you carve out your living spaces in that burrow and then and uh, 
I mean, it, it is imagined that you live on a hill, so next time hurricane strikes, you are safe. You are not your house is not submerged into water. So these are all very kind of a wonder-driven ideas. Urban design often deals with that sense of wonder. You know, how do you really uh, respond to this kind of vulnerabilities and think about new imaginative ways of you know establishing uh, and uh, you know uh, mitigating kind of a this vulnerabilities. How do you make ourselves resilient? And I think these are the new buzzword, resilient. Uh, and we keep talking about it you know, uh, at our institute. And of course, this is a very imaginative work by uh, Lebius Woods. Uh, Lebius Woods was more known for, you know, uh, more known for making drawings of cities. Highly imaginative. He would call it heterotopia. Heterotopia, uh, actually, the word comes from Michael Foucault and uh, Michel Foucault. And uh, Foucault talked about heterotopia as a counter space. It means city, actually, you know, you, you, you design cities, but people always come up with a counter space, a counter, uh, you know, argument to, to your argument. And city always kind of grows with this counter space. So he, he talks about this kind of a old historic fabric cities and how this kind of, you know, fiction kind of a fictional kind of a objects are implanted in the city as a counter space. So heterotopia actually deals with, uh, you know, the way you react to the city and you develop an, uh, a system which is exactly opposite to what it is about. And you can, you can find a lot of events in the cities, you know, they are, they are, they are, they are counter, you know, spaces in the city. And the last slide by Zaha Hadi, uh, this is uh, the attempt to draw, uh, you know, the, the, the essence of Hong Kong city. Uh, Hong Kong city is, is like, you know, uh, uh, it's like Mumbai cities multiply many times. It's always in a in a state of kind of a uh, emergency. Always in a state of you know movement. Always in a state of kind of a networked, integrated. There's a dense network which are which are at you know which are in operation all the time, and. There are simultaneous forces working in cities, you know, and these forces, uh, you know, uh, they complement each other, they contradict each other, they they, they 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 cancel each other out, or, you know, they negotiate with each other. And Hong Kong City is, is a product of such dynamic kind of a network conditions. And this was the attempt to draw uh, this kind of dynamic forces. And buildings are actually, uh, looks like as if they are, are mobile, you know, they are not static anymore, and they tend to reach out, they tend to kind of uh, look at and address the forces that exist in the city. And uh, but this was few attempts to draw cities very true to its character. So uh, urban design uh, ideas, urban design drawings often deals with this kind of imaginative process that we saw in last two slides. And uh, and essentialize the, the, the energy the, the city has and that energy that exert on us and we are product of that energy and we are product of such systems uh, that kind of uh, you know exerted on, on us willingly or unwillingly thank you